Hi everyone and welcome to this movement and music session with the wonderful violinist Elena Uriosti as part of Classical Vauxhall. Um, Elena needs no introduction, she's an incredible concert violinist, has toured all over the world, has won many awards and most importantly is just a wonderful human being. So we're all in for a really great treat over the next hour or so. Um, Elena will also be giving a violin masterclass this evening at 7pm to two young students from the World Heartbeat Music Academy. And she will also be appearing in concert with the wonderful pianist Tom Poster this Friday at 7 p.m. all here on the Vauxhall London YouTube channel. So tune in and um, full details are below in the comment section. If you've any questions for Elena during the session, just type them into the live chat and at the end I'll pop back in and we can have a bit of a Q&A with Elena. So I will hand you over to Elena now and enjoy. Great. Thanks, Fiukra. Hi, everyone. I'm Elena. Um, it's a shame I can't actually see any of you. Um, such such has been this year, but I'm going to imagine all of you there in your spaces, in your comfy clothes, hopefully ready um, to move a little bit. So um, yes, I play the violin, but I sort of divide my life between music and yoga. It's actually less of a delision, di division. <laughs> I blend my life between music and yoga. Um, and I have found that a regular yoga practice has helped my music making in so many ways. Physically, my muscles feel better. Uh, mentally, I feel clearer. I can focus better. Emotionally, I just feel much happier, you know, when, when everything is in working order. So I am very happy to share with you today um, just some really basic, simple movements, breathing exercises, and ideas about alignment that will help any musician um, of all ages and stages. So don't be nervous. This isn't, you know, wild, pretzely, um, very advanced movement. We're going to keep it really simple. All you need is just a place to move around, hopefully, you know, enough space so that you won't hit anything. I always hit the plants, as I'm sure I'm about to demonstrate, um, and we'll get started. So I'm going to join you on my mat. If you don't have a mat, don't worry about it. Just find a, a comfy place. If you have like a blanket lying around to pad up your knees when we get down to the ground, you can grab that. Um, we shouldn't need any props, but if you want to have pillows, anything to make you comfy nearby, grab it um, and we'll get started. So we'll begin standing. Can you see me all right? Yeah. We'll begin standing and we're just going to warm up all of our major joints from the bottom of the body to the top. Um, because for many of us who play instruments, and I'm assuming a lot of you do play instruments, oftentimes we only really think about the arms, maybe the neck, basically the things that we need to make the sound, but everything in the body is connected. So it's really important to, to treat it well from the foundation up. So we're gonna start with the ankles, bring your hands to your hips. Um, that always provides a bit more stability. Transfer your weight over to one foot, doesn't matter which. We're just gonna start by circling out that opposite ankle. If you wanna test your balance, you can have your foot up in the air like this, or you can place your toes down. If you like feeling your toes pop, I do. And just give some nice juicy circles to that first ankle. And whenever it feels right to you, just switch the directions of that of those circles. Same foot. And the point of this is to feel good. So if at any point something doesn't feel good, back off, take a rest. Just have a watch. Good. And then we'll just switch over to the other foot. Same thing. So foot up or down. Toes on the ground. If you like those pops. And whenever it, it feels instinctive, just switch directions. A couple more circles on the ankles. And then we'll get ready to move up to the knees. So for this, bring the feet together to touch if possible. Put a big bend in your knees, prop yourself with your hands. We're gonna circle up the knees nice and gentle at first. Narrow circles, always being gentle with the knees, especially if you're an athlete, if you do a lot of running, cycling, anything like that. And then you can gradually increase the width, the speed. And whenever it feels instinctive, switch directions. might start to notice how your weight is rolling around the bottoms of your feet. Maybe that's interesting. Maybe spread the toes a little wider. 
Good, and then just bend and straighten the knees a couple times. Get used to that motion. And we'll move up to the hips. So widen the feet once again, hands on the hips. And we're gonna start circling them out like we're doing a hula hoop, hula hooping, <laughs> in slow motion. So nice, juicy circles. Imagine you're scooping something really delicious out of a jar. Or I like to imagine like going around the outside or the, you know, the edges of an ice cream carton where it's all nice and melty. So scoop it out, don't miss any deliciousness. If you wanna let your upper body kind of sway in the breeze, you can. Let the neck go. And then switch directions, hula hoop the other way. Let the arms dangle if that feels good. There aren't really any rules to this, so just do whatever feels nice. A few more circles. And then we'll start to address the arms. So we'll begin with the wrists. This is my absolute favorite thing to do as a violinist. So make two light fists, nice juicy wrist circles. You might hear little pops. Maybe your wrists are very talkative today. It's just air getting released. So unless it hurts, no problem to hear those little pops. All right, then reverse directions. And I do this all the time on practice breaks, even when I'm on stage. It just feels really good after my hands have been in the same position for a while. Good, check it out. Open the arms wide, and then take a couple arm circles. Here's where I always hit my plant. So like you're doing a big butterfly stroke in the pool. Your circles can be wide or narrow. Either way, this might build a little bit of heat. So take a break if you get tired. We never wanna push through pain, not while we're playing, not while we're doing anything. Switch directions as you're ready. Keep the chest nice and broad. Couple more. Good, and we'll do one more thing for the shoulders. Open the arms out wide, and then tap opposite shoulders. Give yourself a little hug. Remember which elbow's on top. Swing them back out, other elbow on top, hug. And then keep swinging, keep tapping, giving yourself little squeezes. These can be as slow or as fast as feels good. You might pause, give yourself an extra tight hug, maybe wiggle up and down. Just do both sides. You can also keep it at more of an allegro tempo, if that feels good. A couple more. Surprisingly powerful, what giving yourself a hug can do for your muscles and for your mind and heart. Good, and then let the arms rest by the side. Last thing, the neck. So let's start by just taking the chin, dropping it down to the chest, and let the back of the neck be nice and long. Our heads are quite heavy, kind of like a bowling ball, so it can feel really good to just let that weight hang. And then if you'd like, you can trace a line with your chin over to one shoulder, maybe even take a look behind you. Then trace a line across both collarbones over to the other shoulder. Look in the other direction. Gently bring the chin back to center. Let it hang for another second or two. And then bring the chin back up to center. Nice, we have warmed up all the major joints of our body. Now we're gonna do another exercise that gets us nice and warm, gets the blood moving. It's not quite yoga, but I have found that it's really helpful, especially when I'm cold. If I'm in a cold practice room, if it's winter time, if I'm just not feeling very awake, this always makes me feel a little ooh in my body. So take your feet nice and wide, give your knees a couple uh, bends, feel nice and bouncy, yet really anchored to the ground. And then once again, make two light fists. And we're gonna start by tapping out either side of the hips, the bum, it's really the bum. <laughs> We've been sitting a lot, so tap out either side, and then put a big bend in your knees. Start tapping down the outside edges of both legs. We're gonna go all the way down to the ankles, so bend your knees as much as you need. 
When you reach the bottom, open up your palms and we'll slap up the insides. And then let's do that two more times. So we're tapping down the outer edges of both legs, all the way down to the ankles, and then slapping up the insides. One more time. We like things in threes. Tap, tap, tap. And if there's a spot that feels interesting, you can always linger there. Good, when you've done three trips, take a couple laps around the belly. Wake up all the organs. Tap, 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 tap. And then wave your right hand, make a little cup with it, and bring it over to the left side of the neck. Start to tap out the neck, the upper back, the shoulder, then reach the left arm out. We're gonna tap down the outside, so the top of the left arm, all the way down to the back of the hand, and flip it over, tap up the inside. And then two more times. We're waking up the arms. How many times have your muscles felt too cold to practice? This really helps to get the blood moving. Last time. If you're going faster or slower than me, that's fine. We'll meet on the big beats, like in music. All right, when you're done that side, just simply switch. So bring the left hand over. Start with the neck, the shoulder, the upper back. Again, if there's somewhere that feels interesting, give it a little extra time. And then when you're ready, three trips. Down the outside of the arm, up the inside. I find the noise really satisfying as well. We never want to, we're not like beating ourselves up. It's <laughs> just some gentle tapping. We're waking up the skin as well. Might feel a little tingling. Good. Whenever you're done your three trips of that second arm, take your fingertips to the center of your chest, sort of like a, a Tarzan motion. We're waking up the stale air inside the lungs. If you want to open your mouth, make a sound, you can. Uh, Tap, tap, maybe bring your taps into the armpits, which get surprisingly stiff and crunchy sometimes. You can tap underneath the collarbones, anywhere that feels a little sticky. And then make little raindrops with your fingers. Take them up the neck, onto the jaw, let the jaw go. Tap, tap, tap the cheeks, either side of the nose. Up onto the temples, across your eyebrows, tap your forehead, and finally bring your raindrops onto the top of your head. Tap, 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 tap. Imagine it's raining on your scalp a little faster at the end. Tap, 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 tap. And then bring your arms down by your sides, close your eyes, and just notice what you feel. Maybe you feel a little buzz going through your body. Maybe you feel slightly warmer than when we started moving. Maybe you can feel your blood flushing through the body. Maybe you feel none of these things. That's fine too. Just start to observe what's present for you. There's no wrong answers, I promise. And then as you're noticing how you feel, also begin to notice how your breath is this morning. Does it feel fast or slow? Deep or shallow? Does it feel easy or challenging just to pause and notice these things, which we so rarely take the time to notice? And there's no judgment in any of this. Like I said, there's no right or wrong answers. We're just starting to notice how we feel. And then all together, we'll start to do an exercise where we're, we'll deepen the breath. And this can be really, really good for if you're feeling nervous, either about an upcoming performance or just anything in your life. 
You just need a moment to kind of focus yourself. This is such a good pattern to do. So you can blink your eyes open or keep them closed. I'm not going to be doing anything that um, fancy up here visually. So you can just listen to my words or just soften your gaze if you want to take a look at your screen. So bring your hands to rest on your belly and let your belly really puff out like you've eaten a huge dinner. Just let it hang, let it fill up your hands. And then at the bottom of your next exhale, so when you're empty, take a big breath in and feel your belly puff out even more into your palms. Take up a lot of space in front of you. And then as you exhale, pull your belly button back towards your spine so the belly empties. Two more times. Inhale, puff out your belly, fill your hands. Imagine also your lower back filling. And exhale, empty out the belly, pull it back towards the spine. You can go faster or slower if you need to. One more, inhale. Fill up the belly like a big balloon. Imagine the lungs swelling down. And exhale, belly contracts in. Next, bring the hands to the outside of the rib cage, so kind of like you're wearing a corset. And take a big breath in. This time, feel the bones of the ribs expand out to either side, like you're opening a pair of wings. Exhale, ribs pull in, like you're cinching your waist in with a belt. Inhale, feel the rib cage fan out. Take up space to either side. Exhale, ribs pull in. One more time. Inhale, fill the rib cage, expanding left to right. And exhale, imagine you're pressing an accordion shut. So really empty out all the way. Good, last place, let's bring the hands to the chest. You can rest them on top of the heart. And imagine you have a second pair of hands on your upper back. Take a big breath in and fill that space between all four hands. Exhale, feel the chest fall. Might be a smaller movement than the other places. Inhale, breathe into the space around your heart. Go all the way up to the top. And exhale, chest falls, lungs empty. One more time. Inhale, fill all the way up, fill the chest, fill the upper back, and exhale, gently let it go. Now we'll combine all three places. You can place your hands anywhere that felt natural to you. At the bottom of your next exhale, take a breath in, fill up the belly, feel the rib cage expand, fill the chest to the top. Exhale, empty out through the chest. Feel the rib cage pull in and the belly contract. Inhale, puff out the belly. Fill up the rib cage. Fill the chest. Exhale through the chest, through the rib cage, through the belly. One more together. Inhale, fill up from the bottom, puffing out the belly, expanding the rib cage. Filling up the chest, maybe pause at the top, and exhale through the chest, through the ribs, through the belly. Take a few more rounds of this three-part pattern on your own. Maybe close your eyes if you haven't already. Turn your attention inward. All you have to do is breathe. See if you can find new space inside your body. Maybe summon your breath all the way from your toes and send it all the way up through the crown of your head. It's like light getting let into a dark room. Fill up every corner of your body with breath. Couple more. And then 
Whenever you feel ready, you can start to blink your eyes open. Let the light back in. And just take a moment, notice how you feel. Always so important just to do a little check in with yourself. And we'll move now to a little bit of alignment work, which is kind of a fancy way of saying we're going to stand up really well, which sounds quite boring but is really, really helpful when it comes to playing our instruments. So take a look down at your feet. We want them probably a little bit more narrow than before. A good way to measure is place your two hand, uh, fists together and bring them in between the balls of the big, uh, big toe balls. That's about the, hip, the width of your hips. So these pointy hip things, that should be about uh, in line with your middle toe. And then see if you can parallel like train tracks, the outside edges of the feet. So it might feel a little bit pigeon-toed, especially if you're used to standing with the turnout. Good, spread the toes nice and wide and press down in three places on the bottom of your foot. The base of the big toe, base of the pinky toe, and center of the heel. Oops, I lost my balance. So it's like we've got a tripod or three roots, tr three tree roots underneath each foot. We're really anchored to the ground. Good. Imagine you're squeezing something in between your thighs. So you might feel your thigh muscles engage a little bit, maybe your glute muscles engage. That's good. We want a little bit of that. Then drop your tailbone, that pointy thing, down towards the ground just a little bit so that our pelvis is neutral. Grow taller through both sides of the waist. And then notice if that made your ribcage stick out, just tuck it back on top. So we're nice and tall and then stacked over our core. Broaden the collarbones, so these things, imagine that they're smiling. You can roll your shoulders down the back a couple times to really open up the top of the chest. Good, two more things. Press up through the crown of your head, so not like we're looking up, but the we're being pulled up by a string, like a marionette puppet. And then tuck the chin in ever so slightly so that the ears float over the shoulders. We spend a lot of time with our heads jutting forward if we're playing, piping, texting, driving. So just tuck it in. It might feel like you have a double chin. That's okay. All right, I know that's a lot of things, so I'll run through them again. Press your feet down into the ground, spread the toes nice and wide. Activate those leg muscles. Drop your tailbone down towards the ground. Grow taller through both sides of the waist. Tuck the ribs in a little bit. Nice and broad through the collarbones. Roll the shoulders down and back. Press up through the crown of the head and tuck the chin in. Here we are, this is a yoga posture. It's called mountain pose or tadasana. So imagine you're a, you're a huge tall mountain, immovable, firmly anchored into the earth yet really, really, really tall, expansive. Good, maybe close your eyes here for a breath or two and see if you can find that same breathing that we were doing just a few moments ago, filling the belly, ribs, and chest with air. We'll just start to connect some really simple movements to our breath. Yoga just means a union or yoking. And this can mean a union of breath to movement, a union of mind, body, heart, anything you need it to be. So we're just going to start to unite movement to breath. So on your next inhale, reach your fingertips down, out to either side, and up overhead and turn your palms down and on your exhale start to press your palms down towards the ground like you're dragging your fingers through something really sticky like honey. Let's do that a few more times. Inhale, reach out wide, reach up and exhale, press the air down in front of you like it's really resisting your touch. Two more. Breathe as loudly as you like. Exhale. 
exhale, press the air down. Again, if I'm going too fast or too slow, find your own tempo. This is about your breath and your movement. Every body is different. Every person is different. Good, we'll keep moving. On your next inhale, sweep the arms out and up one more time. This time, clasp all of your fingers together and turn your palms up toward the ceiling. I'm just ducking down because I see my hands have gone out of frame. Reach up through both sides of the body, grow nice and tall. And then exhale, start to bump your hips over to your left and reach your arms towards the right. So we're coming into a little side body stretch. Press both of your feet down firmly into the ground. Notice if you're collapsing or if your breath is catching. If so, just back out ever so slightly. It's not about how far we bend, it's about how much length we can grab. Take one or two more breaths. We're arching over a big beach ball. Good, and then slowly come back up through center. Maybe take a moment, reach tall towards the sky, and then press your hips towards the right, reach your fingers towards the left, side bending to the other direction this time. Imagine you're squaring your hips towards the front of the space, you're squaring your shoulders, and you're nice and tall. And then maybe bend a little bit deeper. One or two more breaths. Good, and then come back up through center. Slowly drag your elbows all the way down. And then place your hands in some imaginary jeans pockets, like on the backs of your hips. Roll out the shoulders a couple times. And then inhale, start to gaze up with your eyes. Lift your heart towards the ceiling. And then maybe press your, hand, uh, your hips forward with your hands any amount. Just coming into a gentle back bend. Keep breathing and keep the back of the neck nice and long. One more breath here. Good. And then start to come back up through center. Put a big bend in your knees and begin to tip forward at the hips. Bend your knees as much as you need to. And then use your hands to rub down the backs of your legs. Little massage as you come forward into a fold. And then once we're down there, bend your knees enough to place your fingertips on the ground. And then we'll just do a little warm up. So wag your tail from side to side, bend one knee and then the other. Just gonna spend a little bit of time upside down because how often do we do that? So get the hips nice and loose. You can do a little cha-cha. Maybe nod your head yes. Shake your head no. You wanna grab opposite elbows. Swing from side to side. Just let this feel really good. Good, and then release the arms if you haven't already. Put a big bend in your knees and start to roll yourself back up to standing. One vertebra at a time of your spine stacks on top of the next. So every time we roll up, it'll be an, um, an opportunity to grow a little bit taller. When you reach the top, circle the arms out and up. Connect the palms overhead. And on your exhale, drag your hands down the center line of your body to the chest. Beautiful. So we'll start to flow a little bit more fluidly, making some bigger shapes coming onto the ground. So at this point, if you need to move your device so that you can see me, preferably without straining your neck, go ahead and do that. And then I'll meet you at the top of your space. I say good, like I can see you, I can't see you, but I'm sure you're good, <laughs> I hope you're good. All right, so feet hip width distance towards the top of your space and we'll start to move them. Inhale, sweep the arms down, out and up, reach tall. Exhale, put a bend in your knees, start to hinge forward at the hips, coming into a fold. Good, inhale, place your hands, the palms of your hands on your shins, and use that resistance to press yourself up to what we call a flat back. 
So it's like your back is parallel to the ground, and it's so straight that you could balance a pizza box on it without it tipping off to either side. Good, and then exhale, bend your knees, fold forward once more. Place your hands down on the ground, and then step back, big step with your right foot, gently lower the knee and untuck those back toes. Adjust your hands so that your fingertips are in line with that front, uh, with those toes. And then we're just gonna start to rock back and forth. So maybe on your inhale, you press into that left knee so that you feel an opening on the front of your right thigh. This can feel really nice if you've been doing a lot of sitting to bring your knee behind your hips. And if here you wanna sway from side to side, you can do little pulses, maybe pull the heart through and look up. And then when you're ready, start to draw both hips back towards your heel, folding over that front shin any amount. So the knee doesn't have to straighten, it can stay bent. But here you might feel an opening under the backside of the left leg. So a little hamstring stretch. And again here, if you wanna wag your tail from side to side, maybe fold forward. Maybe pulse again, anything that feels good. And then when you're ready, bend into that left knee. This time stack it directly above the left heel. Press that right hand into the ground. And inhale, reach your left fingertips up, coming into a low twist. So now if you're here, if you want to take a couple circles with that left arm, rolling out the shoulder a little bit, you can do that. That feels good. Go both directions. And when you're ready, just reach straight up, finding a little bit more space across the front side of the chest. Maybe look up to your fingertips and slowly bring your left hand down, slide your left knee back. And now we're in an all fours position or a tabletop position. So really quick, check in with your hands, spread your fingertips nice and wide and press down in the base of your, uh, I was gonna say first finger, of your index finger, because that's the part of the hand that's going to wanna to come off of the ground. So really press down at the base of your index finger. Stack your shoulders above your wrists, hips above the knees, so it's like we're draped over a box. And then we're gonna warm up the spine a little bit. So take a big breath in, start to tilt your tailbone or your tail up towards the ceiling, Drop the belly towards the ground and look up with your eyes. This is our cow pose. So you can give a little moo if you want. And then exhale, start to roll your tailbone underneath you, hollow out the belly, arch your back like an angry Halloween cat, bring the chin to the chest. This is our cat. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, drop the belly towards the ground. Bring your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Little back bend as you look up. And exhale, round the spine. Press the mat away from you or the ground away from you as you tuck your chin to your chest. One more time using your own breath to guide your movements. Just extending and flexing the spine. Good. We'll meet in a neutral tabletop. Come up onto your fingertips to give yourself a little bit more space. Slide that right foot in between the two hands. Squeeze your inner thighs towards one another. It's gonna require a little bit of balance. And then inhale, reach both arms up towards the ceiling, coming into our low lunge. So drop the tailbone down. Slide the shoulders away from the ears. Gaze up one more time. Maybe reach taller with the fingertips. And then bring the fingertips down to frame the front foot. Curl the back toes under, lift the back knee, and step the left foot up to meet the right. Fold forward, let it go, shake it up. <sighs> Press the hands into the shins, lift to a flat back. Don't drop that pizza. And exhale to fold forward one more time. Bend the knees, roll up to stand. Again, one bone at a time. I'm short, so I always want to See if I can grow a little bit taller every time I do this. I think it's working. When you reach the top, 
Sweep the arms to the sides. Up overhead, connect the palms. And exhale, hands to the center of the chest. Good, we'll do the other side. And I'll circle the arms. Reach up. Exhale, bend the knees. Start to hinge forward. Nice and slow. Inhale, hands to shins. Press up to that flat back. Exhale, fold forward once more. Hands to the ground. Set the left foot back. Nice big step. Lower the knee, untuck the toes. Bring the fingertips in line with those front toes. And when you're ready, press into the right knee this time, opening up the front of the left leg. And again here, it's your choice. You can kind of rock and roll from side to side. Pulse, maybe even pause. Pull the heart up to the sky, gaze up. And when you're ready, start to draw both hips towards the back of your space, folding over that front shin. The toes can even lift off the ground if you want. And again, your choice. You can wiggle, pulse, or find stillness, whatever feels good to you. And press into the right knee, stack it right on top of the right heel. Press the left hand into the ground this time, and then sweep the right arm up, reaching the fingertips towards the sky, and really broaden across the front of your chest. chest. <laughs> if you want to take a few broad swimming strokes with that top arm, you can. Both directions, just lubricating the shoulder. And then take another breath, reach straight up, maybe find your fingertips with your eyes. And gently place the right hand down, slide the right knee back, and we're in our all fours position. Three rounds of that cat and cow breath. So inhale, point the tailbone up, drop the belly, pull the chest through, look up. Exhale, round the spine like you're a really angry cat, except you're a nice peaceful yogi cat. Good, two more rounds on your own. And this is something you can do any time of day, during a practice break, when you wake up in the morning, before you go to bed. Maybe avoid it in the middle of the street, but who knows? It's so nice to keep the spine happy because then the rest of the body is a lot happier. When you've done three rounds, come up onto your fingertips, just give yourself a little more space and set the left foot through in between the two hands. Squeeze those inner thighs towards one another. And as you're ready, inhale, reach both arms up, low lunge on the other side. Square the hips forward like headlights of a car. Roll the shoulders down your back. Maybe lift the heart up towards the ceiling, gaze up. Then slowly lower the hands, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, Step the right foot up to meet the left, fold. Shake it out, whatever you need to do, let that go. And inhale, press up to a flat back, reach the sit bones back, crown of the head forward. Exhale, fold one more time. Inhale, roll up to stand as slowly as you like. When you reach the top, circle the arms out, Palms come together. Exhale, palms to the center of your chest. Beautiful. We'll do one more thing on our feet, and we'll start to take it down. I'm going to do a little bit of balancing, which might not seem like it has a whole lot to do with playing our instruments, but I promise we're going to do something a little fun, test our, um, our balance, obviously, but also our, our mental focus. So bring your feet once again hip width distance, or thereabouts. And then start to transfer your weight over to your left foot. Left leg, I should say. So spread the toes nice and wide. Pull up on your knee. Imagine you're making a fist with your knee so that we protect that joint. You can always bring your hands to your hips to stabilize. Start to lift your right heel up so it's like you're wearing a stiletto. And then swing the right knee over to the side so you're like opening your knee like a book. And then begin to hop the toes over so that the right heel crosses over the left ankle. You're welcome to stay right here. This is already, you're getting all of the benefits of the balancing pose for opening the hip. Or 
If you'd like, you can start to invite that foot up the leg to the inside of the shin or to the inside of the thigh. Just don't have the foot right on the knee, so we want to protect that joint. So above or below the knee, your choice. It's all really the same, so one is not better than the other. You can keep your hands on your hips or start to pick a point of focus for your eyes, preferably something that's not moving. And if you'd like now, bring your arms either into a traditional tree pose, so you can reach your branches up, or bring your arms to the position that you take when you play your instrument, whatever it is. I play the violin, so my arms are like this. If you play the piano, they can be in front of you, cello, a wind instrument, anything. And then, using your focus, start to imagine that you're playing your favorite passage, anything in music. But you're using your breath to move your bow. You're balancing on one leg. If you fall out, no worries. Just try again. We've got plenty of time. Just imagine how easy this will be once you're on two feet. Just take a few more moments, few more breaths. Play your favorite passage as lovingly as possible. And when you're done, bring the hands back to the hips. Swing that knee forward. Gently place the foot down. Pause for a moment. Just reflect on that. How do your legs feel? Do the two sides of your body feel different? How did you handle things if you fell out? Did you get mad at yourself? Did you laugh? And can we maybe just treat this as playing yoga? Because that's what we're doing. We're just playing yoga. It's really not a big deal. So let's try the other side. Start to shift your weight over to whichever side you weren't balancing on. Spread the toes nice and wide. Pull up on the knee so this leg is really nice and strong. Hands on the hips. Start to lift that heel up. Again, like you're wearing a really high heeled shoe. And then turn the knee out to the side. Gradually hop the foot over so left heel is in front of the right ankle this time. Again, you're welcome to stay right here. Sort of the same, it's the same stuff happening in the hips. So you're, you're great right here if you'd like. Otherwise, you can start to invite that foot up the leg. Maybe it's in the same spot as the other side. Maybe it's not. Don't worry if it's not. We're rarely symmetrical. <laughs> Good. Find your point of focus with your eyes. This is really important. Focus on that. As you're ready, you can bring your arms either into a, a tree pose with your branches or to play your instrument. If you're playing your instrument, this time, imagine playing a really challenging passage. See if you can use your breath to make the whole experience a little less. <laughs> Maybe it makes it funny. I mean, you're balancing on one leg. It's, it's kind of silly. <laughs> Keep pulling up on that standing knee. Zip up through the middle line of your body as you play. Keep breathing. If you fall out, we've got another few moments, so don't worry. How compassionate can you be with yourself? One or two more breaths. And as you finish your passage, hands come back to the hips, point the knee forward, release the foot back down to the ground. Just take a moment, reflect again. How did that feel on the second side? Were the two sides very different? And we'll make our way to the ground. So if this next uh, transition isn't comfortable for you, find your way down to the ground any way that you like. I like to come down through a squat. So if you'd like to join me in that, turn the toes now out a little bit wider. Widen up the feet. The knees want to point um, directly behind the toes. So you can bring your hands to your hips or hands to the chest. 
and just slowly start to stick your bum back out behind you like you're sitting into a chair. See if you can keep your spine nice and straight. So lots of length all the way through the crown of the head. It's tough for the thighs. Then lower down as far as is comfortable. Maybe take a moment here, you can rock from side to side. Roll out the wrists. And again, if you want to transition right onto your bum, that's totally fine too, I understand. And if you're still in your squat, use your hands. Just place one knee down, then the other. Swing the legs out in front of you, and we'll meet like this. I'm just going to adjust my camera a little bit. Good, so legs out in front of you. We'll just stretch one leg at a time. Let's start by hugging the right knee into the chest. Peel the knee open to the side again like a book. So the sole of the right foot is connected to the inner left thigh. Good, find a little balance across your two sit bones. You can pull any extra flesh out of the way as I often need to do. And then with a nice long spine, inhale, reach the hands up. And exhale, start to fold over that left leg, toes nice and flexed, and grab either for your foot, for your shin, for the ground on either side of the leg. We want to keep a really nice long spine here, then feel a stretch underneath the left leg. When you're as tall as you can possibly be, then go ahead and relax forward. You can fold over the leg, have it feel nice and relaxing, surrendering. If you're grabbing onto your foot, great. If you're grabbing onto your shin, great. If you're grabbing none of those things, great. And just take a couple breaths here. Start to feel really supported by the ground. We're safely on the ground now. We're sitting on our bums. It's all okay. Good, start to press yourself back up to a seated position. Point the knee back up to the chest. Hop the foot over to the outside of the left leg. And we'll do a little bit of a twist. So this can feel really good if you've been playing a lot, twisting out the spine. So with the crook of your left elbow, hug that right knee in. Place your uh, right hand at the base of your spine like the kickstand of a bicycle. And then inhale, grow a little bit taller through the crown of your head. And then start to look over your right shoulder, coming into a twist. If for whatever reason this isn't comfortable, you can also just twist to the left for more of an open twist. Either way, find length through the spine and imagine then you're wringing it out like a wet towel. One more breath, maybe see something new with your eyes. And then from whatever direction, slowly untwist, look forward. Uncross the legs, pause for a moment, just notice any differences between the two sides, and we'll do the other one. Pull the left knee in, swing it out to the side, adjust your sitting bones if need be, flex those right toes up towards the ceiling, inhale, reach up, and exhale, start to fold from the hips. So spine nice and tall, again, grab whatever it is you're grabbing for. Maybe angle your upper body so that it's directly in line with that extended leg. And as you found the fullest length of your spine that you possibly can, then feel free to relax, bow the head, and breathe into any areas that might be feeling a little bit sticky, a little less open. So yoga really isn't about getting into specific postures. It's about, you know, making inventive shapes, but then within that, finding more space and then occupying that space. And also learning what to do when we're faced with discomfort or unfamiliarity, just like on stage. We don't run from it, we breathe into it. Start to press yourself back up. 
point the left knee up, hop the left foot over, hug the left knee in with the crook of the right elbow, or again, you can be open twisting towards the right if that feels more appropriate for you. If you're closed twisting, bring the left uh, hand to the base of the spine, again, like a kickstand, reach up through the crown of the head, and start to twist, gazing over the left shoulder. Every inhale, we find a little bit more length, more space. Every exhale, maybe we twist a little deeper. A couple more breaths like that. And when you're ready, slowly unwind. Reach both legs out, maybe tap out the knees if that feels good. Let's do a quick forward fold. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward again. Nice long spine. If you want to bend the knees, that's absolutely fine. And then walk your heels away slowly, or you can just reach for the shins or again the ground. Finding the tallest upper body we can. And when you're ready, exhale, bowing forward, breathing into the back side of the body, the undersides of the legs whole length of the spine and just feeling again that sense of surrender you are supported good start to press yourself up bend both knees so stamping the soles of both feet on the ground you can move your bum in a little bit closer to your heels we're slowly going to roll down with control onto our backs so reach the arms forward, take a big breath in. And on your exhale, roll your spine down. So one bone at a time lands onto the ground. See how slowly you can go. Really try and set one vertebra down oh, at a time. <laughs> Good, when you're all the way down, hug your knees into your chest, give yourself a nice big squeeze. If you've got a ponytail or anything in the way, just move it so that the back of your head can be nice and relaxed on the ground. And then rock from side to side. You can feel really good in the lower back. Give yourself a little massage. And then pull the knees into the chest one more time and then drop them over towards your right. Coming into a little twist. The left arm can extend out straight from the shoulder, or you can bend it at a 90 degree angle. And then turn your eyes to look over your left arm. So we're twisting the full length of the spine much more passively this time. And use this twist just to scan the body. Notice if there's anything that you're clenching or gripping that you can let go. Another breath or two. What can you release? Good. Hug the knees back into the chest. Roll to center. And then simply drop the knees over to the other side. I'm going to my left this time. My right arm will be at a 90 degree angle or extended out straight. And I'm twisting, gazing over my right, scanning the body. Seeing if we can relax any extra body part. That's another big lesson in music. Can we engage only what we need to? And can we relax the rest? Another couple breaths here. When you're ready, start to bring the knees back up towards center. Give yourself one more hug. Take any final movements, wiggles, stretches, anything you need to feel satisfied. And when you're ready, extend your legs nice and long. Allow the toes to flop out to either side. I'm going to sit up just because it's easier to talk to you, but I encourage you to stay lying down. This is your time to rest, recover, and reap the benefits of your practice. So legs nice and long, arms by your sides. You can turn your palms up towards the ceiling 
for more of a receptive feel. Or if you'd like more grounding, you can bring them to rest on your heart, on your belly, anywhere that feels comfortable. I encourage you to close your eyes. Return to your breath. We'll just scan through the body, seeing what else we can let go. So lying on your back, start to wiggle your toes, then release them fully. Relax the soles of your feet, your ankles. Allow your calves to feel heavy on the ground. Relax the knees, relax the thigh muscles. Feel the glutes sink into the mat. Allow the hips to feel nice and open. Relax the belly, the lower back. Relax the middle back and the upper back. Relax your chest muscles. Relax your shoulders, have the collarbones feel nice and open. Relax your biceps, your triceps, the elbows melt into the ground. Relax your forearms, your wrists, palms and fingers. Relax the muscles of your neck. Loosen the jaw. Maybe allow the tongue to fall away from the roof of the mouth. Relax your cheeks, your nose. Relax your eyebrows. Smooth the skin of the forehead. Relax the back of your head, your scalp. And relax your mind. Just breathe, letting go of whatever you can. Be quiet for a minute or so. Just breathe. more than welcome to stay exactly as you are for as long as you need. If you'd like to start transitioning back into the world, take a big breath in, feel the belly rise up towards the sky. As you exhale, belly falls, the back side of the body melts a little bit deeper into your space. Start to wiggle the toes, the fingers, just reintroducing tiny movements into the body. Nice and slow, take your time. You can reach the arms overhead, point the toes, take a full body stretch. And then hug the knees into the chest. One more time, give yourself a squeeze. And then roll over onto one side. Just pause here in the fetal position. And then on your own time, no rush whatsoever, begin to press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Take your time and see if you can keep your eyes closed. When you find your comfortable seat, rest your hands wherever it feels instinctive on your thighs, over your heart, even over your eyes. And just take one final moment to keep your attention inward. I invite you to say one kind thing about yourself. Something you can really, really believe and take with you into the rest of your day.
I'm very grateful to have been able to lead you all through this practice. Please, if you have any questions, ask them now. I'll be around to chat. Thank you so much. I hope you have a beautiful day. I'll leave you with the phrase namaste, which just means the light in me sees and honors the light in every one of you. Thank you so much. Take your time. Don't feel like you have to make any quick movements. If you want to keep lying down, completely fine. I'll just make my way to the screen. Thanks so much, Elena. You're welcome. Um, I'm not sure if you, you can probably see the questions in the chat, um, but mm -hmm. I can read them to you if that's easier. I don't see anything because I'm just on the Zoom screen. I don't have the other. Oh, okay. Well, I'll <laughs> read the questions out to you. So the first okay. question, um, first of all, thank you so much for that. It was so relaxing and I can't believe how unbelievably bendy you are. And I realize that I am not in any way as close to that. So I need to work on that hugely. It doesn't matter <laughs> at all, I promise. Um, the first question from Stephen, he asks, do you think music schools should offer more yoga classes to reduce injury risk to musicians? Obviously. <laughs> um, yes. And I actually think a lot of music uh, schools and conservatories, festivals, organizations are kind of catching on to the fact that um, we don't just want to like heal injuries after they've happened. We need some sort of preventative measure. And I think yoga is one way of doing that. It's definitely not, you know, the, the only thing there's all sorts of mindful movement practices that can be really, really healthy for musicians. Yoga is the one I, I happen to find and it resonates with me. So, um, yes, I bet the short answer is yes. I, I think more should be doing it. Brilliant. Um, Next question here um, from Frosted Shreddies says, I have had a bad back from working from home and is there any particular stretch you would recommend? Well, first of all, I would say, let's get away from phrases like bad back. Your back is, your back is great. You have a good back. Um, if you can start to identify what exactly um, hurts or is causing discomfort, like the more specific you can be, I think the more, um, helpful that will be uh you know first one explaining it to others but also to, to aid you in your own recovery so if it's the lower back i would re recommend um gentle twists definitely even using kind of the back of your chair as a support just to help you twist um the ones we did on the ground i love kind of doing that it's kind of what we did um like pressing the hips forward into a gentle back bend and then slowly hinging forward rolling up slowly, just moving the spine in any, um, any direction you can. If it's, you know, higher up, that's sort of a different set of issues, like, um, you know, doing things with the shoulders, with the neck that can really influence what's going on in the upper back. So, um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Like there, there could be a million answers to your question, but it's not a bad back. It's just got a little ouchy spot somewhere. <laughs> I like I like that sentiment. Um, next question is, um, do you prefer to practice yoga before or after violin practice? Hmm. That's a good question. Actually, one I've been thinking about a lot because I realized I'm not so good at the cooling down thing or I forget to do it. Like when I'm done practicing, I just sort of like go start cooking dinner. Um, in general, I, I am very conscientious about warming up. You know, it, it often isn't a full our yoga practice, but I'll do some um, stretches for my arms, for my upper back, for my neck before I start playing, because that's what I need to, to feel comfortable and um, loose when I pick up the, pick up the instrument. Um, so generally before, I do a lot of stretching during. Um, I love taking breaks. I think breaks are wonderful. And like, if you think about playing any instrument, but particularly particularly the violin, it's just so weird. Like who decided that we would have our arm like, it doesn't make any sense. So as often as I can, I like to counter that, you know, get nice and loose, wiggle it out. Um, so yeah, I would say it's a mixture of before, during, less after, but I'm in development on that. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, next question is how many counts should each breath in and out ideally be? Ooh, um, this is completely up to you and different breath counts have very different effects on the body so i would say in general if you're looking to calm yourself down 
you want your exhales to be longer than your inhales. Now this can be truly anything. This could be inhale for one, exhale for two. This could be as much as inhaling for six, exhaling for 10. Um, you can place holds at the top of the bottom, or top or bottom. So uh, inhale for four, hold for two, exhale for six, hold for two, something like that. So you can start to play around with your own breath counts, seeing what works for you. If you're looking to get more energy, um, I would suggest increasing the inhales. Uh, God, there's just so much you can do. Um, you can, you know, experiment with what, with how breathing um, in and out of the nose versus the mouth feels. Um, you know, keeping the mouth shut has a very different effect than, you know, breathing very um, actively out through the mouth. So there's there's like such a massive world of possibilities. So I would say play around with what works for you. You might feel a little lightheaded for, at first um, as you're experimenting, but if you're looking to chill out, lengthen the exhale. That's the general rule. Okay, and then your favorite stretch for your shoulders and neck area. Do you have a favorite stretch? Mm. Um, I, I love doing, so I can't quite see this, but if you take, uh, oh, and I'm probably backwards on my screen. So I'm going to grab onto my left wrist with my right hand and start to pull, um, start to pull my, sorry, my husband is waving at me from the window. Um, <laughs> um, start to pull my left shoulder over towards the right and then drop my right ear towards my right shoulder. Did I say all that right? So I'm grabbing my left wrist with my right hand and dropping my right ear to my right shoulder to lengthen the sides of the neck and the back of the neck. That to me feels really good, often quite zingy. And then coming out super duper slowly. Um, I also just love, and of course do the other side. I also love interlacing my hands behind my back, using it to roll out my shoulders. That can feel really good. Um, basically anything where I'm able to open the chest after having it be closed, um, because just as humans, most of the time our arms are in front of us, not just playing an instrument, but um, typing, texting, driving, all that stuff. So anything I can do to open the front side of my body, I really like doing. Great, and I think just a final lovely comment that came in here um, said, I played violin for years and suffered from neck pain. Pity there weren't classes like this when I was studying violin. So I think that's a really lovely sentiment to your class today, Elena. Oh, and you. Um, you know, I feel the same way. I, I had so many kind of physical, not serious injuries, but just so many discomforts when I was a teenager and in my early 20s. And no one ever really told me how to fix them other than like, a, go to a hand surgeon like it's not quite that bad but yeah just the the idea of taking care of the body as a whole taking care of the person as a whole um unfortunately i think it's a relatively new concept but that's exactly why i started doing this because i just like had it with with only focusing on these things yeah seemed done well, <laughs> well, Elena, thank you so much for today. Um, for anyone watching, Elena will also be doing another education session this evening with two young violin students from the World Heartbeat Music Academy in Vauxhall. And then herself and her wonderful waving husbands there, Tom Poster, will be performing on Friday at 7 p.m. an amazing program of the best of British and US music. So all details for that are in the comment section below as well. So Elena, thank you so much again. And we look forward to your performance. Well, your masterclass this evening.